Clark Hay again. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Wei. I am a React web developer. Uh, you can find me with this unsellable handle everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> in my spare time, I enjoy spamming this world with many, many websites. And what this um, talk come about, I, I'm going to talk about styling today. And what this talk come about was a <clears throat> workshop I did last Saturday on uh, styling a Gatsby site. And <clears throat> uh, to prepare for the workshop, that made me uh, put in a lot of thoughts and research into how we style um, a content centric so a content centric react site so how many of us build your own blog uh, okay a lot of us do you uh, do you if do you use uh, Gatsby starter or do you build your site's own um, styling own start okay from a starter um, I wonder what's oh okay so um <coughs> When, whenever I build my site, so in, in the beginning, I, al I also use a Gatsby starter. Then I realized I have more customization needs. Then I started to build my own styling, and I've become very opinionated about styling my own site, uh, which I'll show you just, uh, in just a bit. But um, <coughs> maybe without us even noti noticing it, React is changing the way we write styles. And what do I mean by that? So. Um, React is, uh, so we're with writing code with React, we're changing from the page-based or template-based mindset on the left towards a uh, component-based mindset. And <coughs> how specifically does that change the way we think about React? Um, so first of all, we're thinking more in, ter in terms of context and components uh, rather than uh, in terms of the whole page, a flat-out page. So um, specifically, a context must preserve the need for different components to live in. Um, <coughs> and then uh, correspondingly, the components must be adaptable to different contexts. We're building the component with the assumption that it lives in multiple places. And we're putting in a lot of props to describe what kind of components um, they are. And there are a lot of uh, opinions set about it. So when I just started doing React, my team lead did not allow me to put a default width to the buttons because the component uh, container will decide how wide that is. Um, so those block level buttons, they look like insane uh, to me. They, they're not buttons. Um, but after, like, this is something that appears after we build, thing, build things with React because we want the component to not be aware of um, <coughs> or to pick up uh, certain styling or layouts from the uh, from the context. Um, <clears throat> when and why did we start to have the needs of namespace CSS? Um, has anybody ever thought about this? It seems to me that it's because we're writing way more components than pages. So when we're writing and and our the components that we write are not supposed to know about each other. Like we're writing a button, and we're not going to name the class name button because we don't know whether somewhere else is going to use the, the button or not. So um, that is pushing us to namespace our CSS like, all over the place. And then uh, nowadays, Bill step is writing our CSS. I, um, I don't know if you noticed this, but um, and it's messing with our thought process with CSS selectors. Uh, so initially, when we write vanilla CSS, uh, <coughs> everything, our whole CSS file was flattened out. Like, there is no nesting. And we had to use only CSS cascading rules and a uh, combination of selectors to uh, try to match, to match the exact uh, CSS uh, objects with the HTML DOM elements that we wanted to style. And apparently, some of us cannot resist the temptation to nest selectors, while some other of us uh, just keep seeing the evils in it and attempting to prevent us from nesting, nesting those things. And um, I think even till today, I still don't think we have a unanimous conclusion on whether we should nest selectors or not. Um, and I think what can be even more confusing is that 
uh, the build time tooling is non-trivially writing our selectors in um, <coughs> during build time now. So uh, CSS selectors are now harder to reason about. Um, sometimes, uh, the, uh, if we use some CSS and JS libraries, maybe that takes away some needs of even writing a selector. You're uh, matching your logic, your data, directly to the styles. But uh, that doesn't take away um, everything. And so <coughs> that's making the whole thought process um, a lot more complex than previously. So sometimes we're going very scoped into component styling, and that feels like a color book game and not, um, not real drawing. So that feels a lot more definite than expressive. Um, so I read this article uh, as I prepared for my workshop, and uh, where he talked about these things. He talked about more things, but he talked about two things that rings a bell in me. Uh, he talks about spectrum and responsibility. So what does he mean by spectrum? Can I put this in one? OK. Um, so there is a spectrum of globalness and component. Um, vanilla CSS is very global, um, whereas uh, CSS modules can move slightly towards component. And then uh, CSS and JS libraries, they're only, they're only ways to write CSS. Um, <coughs> there are libraries that deal with very, com uh, very global um, objects, but I think most of the CSS and JS libraries are built um <coughs> to foster st uh, styling the component. So it can go even very extreme to the end where you can actually write your style plus your component in one single file. So um <coughs> So I would not say that the whole CSS and JS world is towards a component-based mindset. That is not true. Um, but um, a lot of CSS and JS allow me to go um, further away towards that uh, spectrum. And then he talks about responsibility. So uh, thin objects, uh, such as typography information and um, those uh, more foundational styling information, um <coughs> now becomes the responsi responsibility of a global object. And then dynamic information goes into components. And I think, uh, so a refreshed understanding about components is that it doesn't necessarily mean a smaller area of the screen, but a component can um, <coughs> be responsible for um, a very big area on the screen, such as a layout. But it can have a very thin layer of responsibility that it only uh, deals with how uh, the page layouts everything. It, um, it adapts to viewports and, and, and these um, type of things. But um, they nowadays go into the responsi responsibilities of um, components, and they're very dynamic. So. Um, are these the only ways to think about styling? Um, I don't think so. So, okay. Does everybody know what universal CSS is? Um, so traditionally, we write uh, CSS object, and we have a bunch of CSS values. We call them border top. 1.04 em dotted light gray. And uh, how about we turn each of the CSS uh, values into a class? So border top 1.04 em dotted light gray becomes border top with 1.04 em. And then the dotted light gray, uh, these are shorthand properties, so these are separated. Uh, border top style dotted, and so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> is this a joke? Of course it's a joke. Use semantic CSS class names. But um, just to have fun, um, I built my whole site using uh, universal CSS. <laughs> so the styling of this whole site, uh, you can inspect later on. I'm not gonna, the styling of this whole site lives in one single uh, CSS file. And then uh, when I need some specific styling, like um, 
when I have to do uh, styling for this thing, um, I use uh, CSS in JS to inject the styles. So, um, wait, oops, go back to a oh. Bug. Right. Yeah. Re really, it's a bug. Uh, okay. Um, I have something to do tonight. Then. Uh, <laughs> ding. Really, it's bugs. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, alright. <coughs> okay, so the final thing I wanted to talk about uh, is that um, <coughs> the fact that there is no uh, unanimous uh, conclusion on how we start a site, uh, for me, is something that's really interesting about this whole topic because you can try out like everything um, that you find interesting. Um, and in the same time, having uh, generating your own thoughts um, <coughs> on or your own attitudes on how you style uh, your site. So, um, so I hope we'll all put down the color book and uh, go back to drawing again. All right, thank you. <laughs> so I can take this off now, and then now I'm no longer a speaker, but. Um,